Shalom, Apostle Taha coming back at you with this truth, giving all praise to you. And I'm going to entitle this video, We Are in the Time of the Black Horse, uh, Revelation uh, chapter 6. And I might as well just go and read either the whole chapter or most of the chapter. We touched on it on the video, the after camp uh, class. Uh, yesterday and um, the young brothers were uh, they went through they, they, they broke down and uh, interp interpreted uh, Revelation I'm, not, I'm sorry Isaiah chapter 34 and you can watch that video got a lot of hits already and a lot of comments um on that particular video. So Revelation, someone in the audience had mentioned Revelation 6, chapter 6, verses 5 and 6, and I'll read it. And um, he mentioned the word penny, measure wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. I'm not going to so much go into the oil and the wine. I put some precepts together on it because I was going to do a show maybe about two hours ago. But the oil and the wine represents the truth. See, with all this, this uh, shortage, food shortages, which is nothing but a famine. And if you do a word search on the word famine, it's all throughout the scriptures, the Old and the New Testament and the Apocrypha. There's going to be food shortages, and them that can get the food, the food is going to be high. So people will have to make a choice whether they have, whether they pay their rent, pay their light bill, or get some food. So I'm gonna let you listen to this. This is from a video that was just put up by, uh, and that's a spirit because I was going to do a, a video on this anyway, uh, featuring. Um, uh revelation chapter six so this was put up by um gms awakening 144 uh what is that the end i can hardly see that but the the end give me a second here Anyway, the title is uh, Prophecy is Speaking Loud. This is an example, an illustration of how bad it's going to get soon. And I'm not going to play any of the news clips because you know how YouTube gets down. But anyway, I, want, I wanted to play this right here. So just listen. I beheld a low a black horse, and it was set on him, and a pair of balances was attached. And had a voice in the midst of four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and two measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Okay, I don't want you to show show you this. You saw I got a picture of this of the current. King of Babylon. Now, the part with the the, the brother mentioned um, the up and coming elder mentioned um, the penny. So we said, so "What does it mean by the penny?" He said, the "Measurement of money." And I said, "No, go deeper, go deeper." So it was myself and uh, Apostle and Rhyme Lab that kind of were kind of speaking at the same time, and. Um, it was given to somebody else, which which is the brother Amawan Gabar that did this video, and he broke it down. Um, that the penny is a day's wage wages in uh, the Roman Empire, because the um, Apostle John was on the Isle of Patmos during the time the rulership of the Roman Empire. 
Now, the Romans, like the soldiers, for example, they got, they received a day's wages, which was uh, a denarius, which is uh, that penny. The, the scripture, when, anytime you come across a word penny, as in Revelation chapter 6, also, I believe that's in Matthew. I'm not going to go to it. I may go, go to it in a little bit where it speaks about they were hired for the same penny. Some came in at the first hour and some came in in the, in the last hour, the 11th hour. You can go read the account yourself. And the ones that came in in the first hour complained at the fact that they're getting the same penny as the ones that came in at the, at the last hour. So the Lord command, uh, reminded them, did not uh, we make an agreement on one penny? And that one penny means a day's wages. So if you want to bring it up to date, what's a day's wages to somebody? You know, if you, if you, if you can bring home free and clear $350 a day, that's pretty good. Pretty good. You're, you're working class. Oh, check this out. U.S. 10-year yield, and you see the, the triple four, the four, four, four. See the triple four. And we see that all the time. But anyway, I'm not going to make this long. And I'll probably do a, a video a little bit later, unless the spirit jumps on me. So I'm going to go to it real quick. And like I said, um, in Revelation 6, where it speaks about see thou hurt not the oil or the wine, the oil and the wine represents this truth, this knowledge. So, you know, this black, the black horse that we're in, that we're in the beginnings of the black horse. And then right after the black horse comes the pale horse. Matter of fact, let me go to that. Revelation 6. Okay, Revelation 6. It's 17 chapters. I made, I read, I'll read, go through most of it, or I'll read some of it. But anyway, I'm going to go right to the point, which is the third seal, which is famine. Because in the midst of the famine, you have people that are eating, and then you have people that are not eating. You know, that you have people that can eat three meals a day, depending on your status. And you have people that pray that they can have one meal a day. And we're definitely in the beginning stages of the black horse. We're in the black horse. So it says here, the third seal, Revelation 6, verse 5. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, come and see. And I beheld and lo, a black horse and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. The oil and the wine represents uh, the, the, the understanding the wisdom and knowledge and the understanding of the most high. There's a reference in the Song of Solomon. Let me, let me go to that real quick. Let me just put in the word. Let me just put in the word. Uh, okay, where am I?
Okay, let me open up this tab here. Uh, you know what? I'll just I'll just quote it to you. This is uh, Song of Solomon. I believe it's eight. I'm not going to go to it. Um, where uh, Solomon is saying in the in, in the songs, he finds a man and he brings him into his house and and he and he gives him spiced wine. That spiced wine represents the knowledge. So if it's a uh, spiced wine, it tastes good. When you first wake up to this, you come across the videos and so forth. It's sweet. It's music to your ears. It's a sweet taste in your mouth. But then comes the bitter part. Then when you go to uh, Matthew's chapter 25, and it speaks about the 10 virgins, five were wise and five were foolish. What made, the, what made the five virgins wise? Because they had what? They had oil in their lamps. And what is the oil? The oil is this truth. That's why when you read that whole account, the ones that didn't have any oil came to the ones that have oil and said, give us of your oil. And they said, no, because if we give you of our oil, we will have none for ourselves, merely paras paraphrasing. Meaning there's going to come a time where it's going to get so bad out here, you're going to be looking for answers. Like I said, when they set up the Karagma stations, you're going to have a lot of these individuals in these different camps. They're going to bug the hell out. And they're going to question their teachers. When their teachers say, oh, that means an embargo or Christianity, which it, which it, damn, which, which, which it doesn't mean that. So like I said, when you look up the word penny, it's, it goes back to the word denarion, which goes back to the root word uh, denarius, which means a Roman, a silver coin, which represented a day's wages. And, they, and it, was, it was about three, almost four grams which is about a little more than a tenth of an ounce of silver. So, so a penny went a long way. You know, you were making a penny a day, six days a week, you were living good. So now a measure of wheat, let's say flour, you, you know, you go to the supermarket, you get ketchup, you get chicken, you get milk, you get this, you get that. And then you get, you're running low on flour. So you grab your thing of flour. Flour might cost two, three dollars, right? So it's saying it's going to get so bad that that bag of flour or wheat, because that's processed wheat, that's all, that, that's all flour is, is going to cost you a day's wages. That's, that's called hyperinflation. And, and I'm going to say this again. We are living in the beginning stages of the black horse. What comes after the black horse? The fourth seal, which is death. So we're, we're right at the door of the, the destruction, the deliverance of Israel and the destruction of this current system. Esau is the end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Seven verse, and when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, come and see. And, and I looked and behold a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death. And hell, the word hell meaning the grave, the word death is synonymous with hell, followed with him. So, like I, I said, I said on one video, or uh, maybe I spoke about it with the, with some of the the apostles and uh, the bishop. I said, you know, there's going to be a time where you're going to see dead people in the street. 
you know, you'll, you, you'll pass by and you'll see somebody laying in the street and you think it's just a person laying there. You find out the person was dead. You know, the, the, these, uh, <clears throat> you know, the police, you know, law enforcement, they really can, they, when it's gonna get so hellish that they're only concerned about their family. You read about this, the Texas school shooting and it said that a lot of those police officers ran into the build to the school and they got their children out and didn't give a damn about the other children that were in there. And they come to find out that they were mostly outside um, waiting till the gunfire stops. So, you know, what's the point of, of, of police if that's the case? Well, the police have the gun to protect themselves. They're looking, they're looking after themselves. They ain't looking after you. And they're looking for a paycheck and benefits and a good and a great pension plan. And that's why you have the military, US military, guys in the military because they're getting, they're getting benefits. If they wouldn't give, they stop giving them ben benefits, they'll, they'll uh, you know, they'll go AWOL, man, they'll leave. And that's what happened in Rome when they kept uh, monetizing the denarius, meaning they kept putting inferior metals inside of the denarius when, when it wasn't uh, full gold. And the, and the Roman soldiers realized that when they went to buy things, the price the prices kept going up. They suffered inflation back in the Roman Empire, and so these centurions and these, you know, Roman military men, they complained. But then they made them happy because they gave them the money. But they realized that there was an inferior metals in the denarius. And that's the same thing happening right now. The gas prices didn't go up, jump up to five, six dollars. You know, four a couple of weeks ago we were saying four thirty, four forty. Then it went back down to three eighty, and then it, two weeks later, shot three weeks later, shot right back up. And now it's now it's hitting five. Some places it's five five nineteen. You know, five twenty nine, and it's not. You saying the prices keep going up? Bring the the price is not going up, going up. It's the and I've been saying this for years. It's the value of the money that's going down because this is a fiat currency. And what they do in a fiat currency, they 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 pay for their own bills by creating uh, dollars out of thin air, and then it and then it and it, and it um, becomes a part of the system. And therefore, you have what? Too many dollars, so the, the, it loses its value. I said this a bunch of times. And the average person, even educated people, don't know what the hell is going on. So let me read that again, the eighth verse. And I look and behold, behold a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed him and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth. Now the fourth, fourth part of the earth, I give credit for Deacon Hakar, al whoever, again, whether they found it together, you know, I checked it out and it made sense. If you put the, the fourth part of the earth in Google, there was a, a, a somebody that wrote a book, I'm not gonna go to it, uh, and he referred to the uh, matter of fact, you know what? Let me let me go to it. Let me go to it. Because I said it in another video, so you might have not checked out that video. So let me take fourth part of the earth. And I'm gonna Google it. And so thank you to uh Alizar, uh Deacon the car, you know, for coming up with that. See, we hey, look, we'll give you credit, brother. We give you credit if, if you if you deserve credit. Oh, King King Hafon, 
this guy was coronated. You had a bunch of, you had Portuguese Edomite and a uh, French Edomite that came to, that attended this guy's uh, coronation as king of Judah in, um, in the land of uh, uh, Wa Waida, which is Judah. So you're telling me that, that the Israelites were not in West Africa? This guy was an Israelite. This guy was an Israelite. You can see he was a Jake. And he was wicked because he was selling his own people to the so-called white man. That's why the French was over there. And the, the Portuguese were over there. They weren't good with this guy because he sold out his people. And then the Dahomey Empire came, came into be, which, which were more Jakes that came into power. So let me do this. Okay, these are pick, uh, pictures of books. Uh, let me do this, let me go to all. You know what? Let me do this. <coughs> the fourth part of the of the world. I thought it was Earth is of the world. The race to the ends of the earth and the epic story of the map that gave America its name. Which this America is considered by this uh, author that wrote this book the fourth part of the world or the fourth part of the earth. So let's go and do this. Like I said, I did this, did this in a previous video. I'm just going over it again. Okay. In 1507, Martin Welder Smuller created a map that depicted what was then known as the fourth part of the world. Revelation six says the fourth part of the earth. The other three parts being Asia, Europe, and Africa, because they were trading between Africa, Europe, Asia, and it was Christopher Columbus a crystal ball cologne that set sail for the new world. That's why they call this side of the world, the Western side of the world, they call it the new world. Because, and then this represents Europe, Asia, and Africa, represents the old world. It says, it says 1,000 copies were printed, but only one remains discovered by accident in the library of a German castle. Now, you know what I got to do? Let me click because it says that the Congress, I got to find that. The Library of Congress purchased that uh, the book. It should be here. Let me do this. And they're going to come up. Let me do this. In the library, library of Congress. Let's see if it comes up. Let me just read this. When Toby Lester, and I showed you a picture of the book that Toby Lester put together, heard about the map, he set out on a journey to tell the story of how the map was created and eventually came to the Library of Congress. The result is the fourth part of the world or the earth 
the race to the end of the earth and the epic story of the, of the map that gave, gave America its name. But like I said, there was one copy left and it was, it was a library of Congress that purchased it. And I think it was for $10 million. Why would they do that? But anyway, let's come back to. So this A verse is talking about over here in America, the, the, the Western hemisphere, North Canada, North America, Central and South America. And I looked and behold a pale horse and, it, and his, and this is gonna be the fulfillment of uh, second Ezra's chapter 15, chapter 16, and then chapter 13. And I looked and behold a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death and hell follow and Christians get all caught up on the hell that you're gonna burn in hell. Hell, hell means the grave, it's synonymous with death. When you die, they put you in the tomb or they put you in the grave, which the Hebrew word is Hades, which means the grave. Follow with him and, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth. So it's gonna be mass death and ultimately destruction by the, the uh, fire. To kill with sword and with hunger, so the famines are gonna get worse and with death and with the beast of the earth. The fifth seal. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar, the souls of them that were slain for the word of our Lord, Yahweh, and for the testimony which they held. That's also in Revelation 20 verse four. And they cried with a loud voice saying, how long, O Yahweh, holy and true, do if thou not judge it and avenge our blood on them that dwell on earth. They're talking about Esau, the Edomites. You know, yesterday when we were speaking, we ran into this guy that walked by and he said he was from, uh, what is that? Uh, Peru, what was that Peru, Peru? He was per Peruvian. And he was speaking when we mentioned the white man. I said, the white, you know, the white man said, W. He said, no, 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 no. You can't say that. You can't say that. No, you can't. We got to have love. Then he said, John 3 16. You can watch it on the video. Then he passed by us on one side of the street. But then he, when he passed by us, he made sure he was on the other side of the street. But, um, you know, around when he left, we started going and we started Googling, you know, who conquered Peru. So Sakharan, Bishop Sakharan, he mentioned, it, you know, conquista Spaniards and who, who took uh, the Dominican Republic or the, or the island of, uh, uh, what's the island? The name of the island is uh, Hispaniola. Half of the island is, is, uh, the so-called Dominicans, the other half are so-called Haitian, um, uh, Simeon and Levi, which are brethren They're on the same island, all right? And so we said, who took that over? Spaniards. That's why when you go to Central and in South America, the people down there speak what language? They speak Spanish. Why do they speak Spanish? Because it was the Spaniards that conquered them. And what's their religion? What's the... What's the, the the, the number one religion in, in uh, Central and South America, Roman Catholicism. Why? Because the Spaniards brought their brand of Christianity and forced it upon the, the, the Indians, the indigenous, indigenous people. Why in America do we speak English? Because it was the English that conquered America. Get and when and when it went and gathered us together from West, mostly from the West side of Africa. When we came over here to slavery and to serve slavery, the language that the master gave us was English. And the religion that he gave us was not necessarily Roman Catholic, 
it was some other form of a Protestant religion, whether it was Protestant, a, a Calvinism, if that's a word, a Baptist, you, know, you have the Southern Baptist. So, you know, there you go. It says 11 verse, and, and white robes were given unto every one of them, which are Israelites. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. So this is going back during the time of the apostles. They were all put to death. The only one that survived was uh, John. The, the apostle John in which he was set up and anointed to write the book of uh, Revelation which was given, which was for the seven churches of Asia Minor. So we're getting ready to come to the fulfillment of the Revelation 6.10, Revelation 6.11, Revelation 6.12. So Revelation 6, verse 12, which is the sixth seal, is right at the door. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair. It's not talking about a lunar or solar eclipse. It's talking about those missiles covering the sky. And the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell onto the earth, now, what John saw, he looked up and he saw, he said, oh, those are stars. And he saw the stars fall, fall from the sky. Remember, this, was, this, this vision that he saw took place in the daytime because he said he saw what? He saw the, the sun become black as sackcloth. So he's looking up and it was, it was bright. The sun was out and he looked and he looked up and he saw everything go black. And then he noticed, oh, wow, wait a minute. The stars are falling on heaven. Those weren't stars. Those were the missiles. Those were the ICBM missiles, and which are intercontinental ballistic missiles, and this, the hypersonic missiles. You can't detect a hypersonic missile with radar. That's why the, the, the spirit, a couple of preceptors said the Lord is going to come as a what? As a thief in the night. It says, uh, okay, 13 verse. And the stars, which were the missiles of heaven, fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree cast, casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. So if you're in the Middle East and you ever come across a fig tree, if a, if a mighty wind blows, some of those figs fall to the ground. So, the fi so when he made the analogy of a fig, figs, he was actually talking about the missiles. And the heavens departed as a scroll, Isaiah 34. They call it a mushroom cloud. So he saw the mushroom cloud when the missiles hit ground zero. When it is rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places, earth was going to be sh uh, shaken. Fifteen verse, and the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the, and the chief captains and the mighty men, military, and every bond man and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the, in the rocks of the mountains. There's a mountain uh, retreat, Cheyenne mountain retreat in, uh, Colo in Colorado. And it can hold over a million people. And they, they ain't plan on let you in. It says uh, 16 verse, and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne 
and from the wrath of the Lamb, which is Yahweh, which is Yahweh shot. And this is poetic. This doesn't mean that everybody, oh, they're going to say it at the same time. No, this is just poetic. They're going to be in fear because they're going to see the ships. They're going to see the, uh, the chariots. They're going to see us being, getting beamed up. And they're going to see the missiles, you know, hitting ground zero and the best of destruction, that hot wind. That's in Jeremiah, it speaks about a wind. Uh, what is that? Uh, what does it say? Let me go to it real quick. Go to Jeremiah 50. Let me put in wind. Okay, it's not there. It's, it's got to be in. Uh, let's try 51. Destroying wind. That's what I meant to say. This is Babylon judged for sins against Israel, for coming against the Israelites. Let's say, if you have, behold, I will rise up against Babylon, America, and against him that dwell in the midst of them that raise up against me a destroying wind, a hot wind. 17 and last verse, final verse. The great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand? Esau is in his power seat. You go, that's when he's going to lose his power seat on that day. Anyway, with that, I'm going to say shalom.